the human mind presents us with a paradox. On the one hand, the mind is an engineering masterpiece. Despite decades of effort in artificial intelligence and computer science, no man-made robot or artificial intelligence system can see, move, speak and understand, or use common sense nearly as well as a person. You can't go to an appliance store and buy a domestic robot like Rosie the Maid in the Jetsons and bring it home and expect it to put away the dishes or run simple errands. The reason is that the mundane mental activity that goes into something like picking up a pencil or understanding a sentence turns out to be formidable engineering tasks that human engineers have been unable to duplicate in man-made systems, but that can be effortlessly carried out by any four-year-old. On the other hand, for all its engineering excellence, the mind has a number of apparent quirks. For example, why is the thought of eating worms disgusting? It's a perfectly nutritious form of animal protein. Why does the male of our species do insane deeds, such as challenging each other to duels or murdering their ex-wives? Why do people in all cultures believe in ghosts and spirits? Why do fools fall in love? <laughs> well, I'm going to try to answer these uh, questions, both why uh, is the mind such an engineering masterpiece, and why does it seem so quirky, using three key ideas. The first idea is computation, that the function of the brain is information processing or computation. This is a powerful idea that solves an ancient problem, namely, what is intelligence, and how could a hunk of matter, such as a brain, accomplish it? Well, there have been many attempts to define intelligence over the years. I don't think anyone is happy with the traditional psychologist definition of whatever it is that IQ tests measure. I think a better characterization comes from William James, who tried to put his finger on the difference between behavior that we would be willing to call intelligent and superficially similar behavior that we would not be willing to call intelligent. And here's how he characterized the difference. Romeo wants Juliet as the filings want the magnet, and if no obstacles intervene, he moves toward her by as straight a line as they. But Romeo and Juliet, if a wall be built between them, do not remain idiotically press pressing their faces against the opposite sides like the magnet and filings with a card. Romeo soon finds a circuitous way, by scaling the wall or otherwise, of touching Juliet's lips directly. With the filings, the path is fixed. Whether it reaches the end depends on accidents. With the lover, it is the end which is fixed. The path may be modified indefinitely. Well, this pinpoints intelligence as the pursuit of goals by inference, inference being a knowledge of logic, statistics, or cause and effect in the world. For example, if the goal is touch Juliet's lips, an inference capable of attaining that goal might be something like if C is between A and B, they cannot touch. If A goes over C, C is no longer between A and B. Therefore, to touch Juliet's lips, go over the wall. Here is how a computational system can display this bit of intelligence. In a computational system, goals and knowledge are a kind of information. They are represented as patterns of bits of matter in the system, called a representation. Moreover, the system is designed so that one representation causes another just by following the laws of physics and chemistry, but the system has been rigged up so that the change from representation to representation mirrors the laws of logical or statistical inference, with the result that if the initial representation was true, the subsequent representations uh, are also true. The ability to derive new truths from old truths in service of a goal brings us back to William James's definition of intelligence.